morning, dear students. I am Sanjay Goyal, Assistant Professor of English, Department of English, Jain Vishwabharati University, Larnoon. Today we are going to discuss the paper number fifth of your MA previous, that is Literature for Human Values. It is block number four that contains Gitanjali. Gitanjali, as you all aware, is a very famous book of a Nobel laureate R. N. Tagore. Rabindranath Tagore is actually very famous for Gitanjali, and Gitanjali was a book that made him very famous. We would like to uh, have a small introduction about Rabindranath Tagore, how he became very popular, and his important works, his important uh, things and themes in which he write. So, all those things will be discussed in the introduction. As you can see, he was a poet, philosopher, educationist, and man of letters, who has written more than 50 dramas, 100 books of poems, and 40 novels. He was the first Asian writer to win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913. Gitanjali, his masterpiece, was originally written in Bengali. He was called Gurudev by Gandhiji and he called Gandhiji as Gandhiji, very fond of nature and he can be compared with the famous nature poet of English literature, William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth, who is a romantic poet, was also very famous for nature poetry and because of nature poetry, he has got a distinct place in English literature. In the same fashion, R.N. Tagore was also very uh, near to the nature poetry. He did not appreciate the bookish education. He got married with Mirnalini Devi in 1883. He was much influenced by Indian culture, Vedas and Upanishads. Great poets, William Butler Yeats, C.F. Andrews were his uh, intimate friends. He established Shanti Niketan that is known as Vishwabharati University now. Tagore established harmony between man and man, man and nature, and man and the divine. His main themes are man, good nature, love, life, death, freedom, childhood, social evils, patriotism, realism, etc. Tagore has been called the son of India, the bard of the East, world poet, sentinel of the East. He is known for spontaneous music and beauty of expression like Keats. So he can be compared with Keats also for spontaneity and the special variety of songs. It will be apt to note here that Gurudev was very much fond of music and he created a new form of music that is known as Ravindra Sangeet. Now, he wrote many works and uh, uh, it will not be uh, uh, useful to include all of the works written by Tagore. So, I have selected some important works for you and uh, uh, which are very much important, which are very much famous and as a student of English literature you must remember. So, some of them are here. Chitra, which was uh, written in 1895, Sonar Teri, 1895, The Crescent Moon, 1913, The Gardener, 1913, Chitrangada, 1912, The Post Office, 1912, The King of the Dark Chamber, 1914, Gora, 1908, Home and the World, 1916, Manasi, 1890, Ganir Bahi, 1893, Chitali, 1896, Kahini, 19th century, Kalpana, 19th century, Kashnika, 19th century, Naivedya, 1901, Smaran, 1903, Utsarg, 1903, it was a poem, Gitanjali, 1910. Gitanjali was the collection of songs for which he was offered the Nobel Prize of Literature. Now, we would like to have a small introduction of Gitanjali. As you can see, Gitanjali is a collection of poems by the Indian poet Rabindranath Tagore. The original Bengali collection of 157 poems was published on August 14, 1910. The English Gitanjali or Song Offerings is a collection of 103 
English poems of Tagore's own English translations of his Bengali poems, first published in November 1912 by the Indian Society of London, it contained translations of 53 poems from the original Bengali Gitanjali, as well as 50 other poems which were from his drama Acharaltan and eight other books of poetry, mainly Giti Mala, 17 poems, Naibedya, 15 poems, Kheya, 11 poems. The translations were often radical, leaving out or altering large chunks of the poem and in one instance fusing two separate poems, Song 95, which unified Song 8990 of Naibedya. The translations were undertaken prior to a visit to England in 1912, where the poems were extremely well received. In 1913, as you are aware, Tagore became the first non-European to win the Nobel Prize for Literature, largely for the English Gitanjali. So this was the importance of Gitanjali. The English Gitanjali became very famous in the best and was widely translated. The word Gitanjali is composed from Geet, means song you know, and Anjali means offering. And thus it means an offering of songs. But the word for offering, Anjali, has a strong devotional connotation, so the title may also be interpreted as prayer offering of song. It can be called as a prayer offering of song. So it was very famous uh, text and a collection of songs by Gurudev. There is no doubt about it. And because of Gitanjali, he got Nobel Prize. Uh, it was the, the crux of the songs, the beauty of the songs that made Gitanjali a very popular text worldwide. In order to understand the beauty and the message and meaning of Gitanjali, we would like to see some important stanzas from Gitanjali text. Here we go. One important stanza from Gitanjali itself. Thou has made me endless, such is thy pleasure. This frail vessel thou emptiest again and again, and fillest it ever with fresh life. This little flute of a reed thou hast carried over hills and dales, and hast breathed through it melodies eternally new. At the immortal touch of thy hands, my little heart loses its limits in joy and gives birth to utterance ineffable. The infinite gifts come to me only on these very small hands of mine. Ages pass, and still thou poorest, and still there is room to fill. Poet expresses the beauty of God, and he says that poet has been made endless by God. God has been filling the poet since time immemorial. Even there is enough time to be filled even now. So this is the beauty that can be felt in the stanzas. Another stanza, Tagore says, O fool, try to carry thyself upon thy own shoulders. O beggar, to come beg at thy own door. Leave all thy burdens on his hands. Who can bear all and never look behind in regret? Thy desire at once puts out the light from the lamp it touches with its breath. It is unholy. Take not thy gifts through its unclean hands, except only what is offered by sacred love. The poet says about the, the gifts which are offered by God. The poet also says that one has to accept the gifts of the God without any discrimination. And he should not compare his gifts with the gifts of others. Because it is the desire of God, and God must be having some different kind of thinking for you and for a particular person, and that is how he has given the gifts. He further says, this song is a very important song of Gitanjali, and uh, uh, sometimes you must have read it in a form of a small poem, where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments, by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms toward perfection, 
where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee, into ever binding thought and action, into that heaven of freedom. My father, let my country awake. So this is a prayer of Tagore for free, honest, and developed India. Here Tagore says that everyone should be free, thinking should be free, mind should be free, intellect should be free in my country. And this is how, my God, you develop my country. This is the earnest prayer of Tagore. So this is a very beautiful song once again. Another song and another important stanza from Gitanjali. This is my prayer to thee, my Lord. Strike, strike at the root of penury in my heart. Give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrows. Give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service. Give me the strength never to disown the poor or bend my knees before insolent might. Give me the strength to raise my mind high above daily trifles and give me the strength to surrender my strength to thy will with love. Here actually he, he demands a kind, of, a kind of energy to be given to poet so that he can, he can surrender himself. He can be uh, loyal in rendering his duties. So once again this is a kind of prayer to give to poet a, an energy so that he can become efficient person to do all the things which he wants to do. Another stanza that is also very much important when the heart is hard and parched up, come upon me with a shore of mercy. When grace is lost from your life, come with a burst of song. When tumultuous work rages its din on all sides, shutting me out from beyond, come to me, my Lord of silence, with thy face and rest. When my beggarly heart sits crouched, shut up in a corner, break open the door, my king, and come with the ceremony of a king. When desire blinds the mind with delusion and dust, O thy holy one, thou wakeful, come with thy light and thy thunder. He says, the poet says, when he is in difficulty, when he is in dilemma, when the life is completely shattered, at that time, O my God, you should come. The poet requests God to come at a difficult time, just like a king actually. So it is a kind of kingly welcome which is to be given by the poet. And further he says, this is my delight. Thus to bait and watch at the wayside, where shadow chases light and the rain comes in the wake of the summer. Messengers with tidings from unknown skies greet me. Speed along the road, my heart is glad within, and the breath of the passing breeze is sweet. From dawn till dusk I sit here before my door, and I know that of a sudden the happy moment will arrive when I shall see. In the meanwhile, I smile and I sing all alone. In the meanwhile, the air is filling with the perfume of promise. So, in this beautiful stanza, Rabindranath Tagore says, about those situations, about those uh, particular atmospheres where he wants to invite uh, God when it is the morning time, when it is the evening time. In those particular situations, Tagore wants to invite him so that the problems of his life can be got over. And he further says, you came down from your throne and stood at my cottage door. I was singing all alone in a corner, and the melody caught you, your ear. You came down and stood at my cottage door. Masters are many in your hall. And songs are sung there at all hours. But the simple carol of this novice struck at your love. One plaintive little strain mingled with the great music of the world, and with a flower for a bride, you came down and stopped at my cottage door. Tagore says, that he was singing a song in the appreciation of God. There were so many singers who were singing the songs in the appreciation of God, but God liked the song sung by Tagore only. He was a very small singer, he says. Even then, God liked the song sung by Tagore. He further says, let all the strains of joy mingle in my last song. 
the joy that makes the earth flow over in the righteous excess of the grass, the joy that sets the twin brothers life and death dancing over the wide world, the joy that sweeps in with the tempest, shaking and walking all life with laughter, the joy that sits still with its tears on the open red lotus of pain, and the joy that throws everything it has upon the dust and knows not a word. Further, the poet says that his life has got so many enjoyments, so many problems also, but the meeting with the God is the finest joy that he wants to get. He further says, he it is the innermost one who awakens my being with his deep hidden touches. He it is who puts his enchantment upon these eyes and joyfully plays on the chords of my heart in varied cadence of pleasure and pain. He it is who waves the web of this maya in heaven's scent hues of gold and silver, blue and green and lets peep out through the folds of feet at whose touch I forget myself, days come and ages pass, and it is ever he who moves my heart in many a name, in many a guise, in many a rapture of joy and of sorrow. The poet says, poet says about the beauty, about the power of God, and he says, everything that happens in the world happens because of God. He touches everything and makes everything beautiful. It is the wave of Maya created by God only, and it is the touch of God that creates a kind of sensation, that creates a kind of beauty, that creates a kind of understanding in the mind of Tagore. Tagore further says, I know thee as my God, and stand apart. I do not know thee as my own and come closer. I know thee as my father, and bow before thy feet. I do not grasp thy hand as my friends. I stand not where thou comest down and ownest thyself as mine, there to clasp thee to my heart and take thee as my comrade. Thou art the brother among us, my brothers. But I heed them not, I divide not my earnings with them, thus sharing my all with thee in pleasure and in pain. I stand not by the side of men, and thus stand by thee. I shrink to give up my life, and thus do not plunge into the great waters of life. Tagore says, I do not know, but I want to come to closer to you. I want to grasp you. I want to feel you. The poet says, I feel, I think that you are just like my brother. You are just like my brother, and I want to give everything to you that is related to me. So poet has a strong desire to have a meeting with God. In the uh, other stanza, once again he says, O thou the last fulfillment of life, death my death, come and whisper to me. Day after day I have kept watch for thee. For thee have I borne the joys and pains of life, all that. I am that I have, that I hope and all my love have ever flowed toward thee in depth of secrecy. One final glance from thine eyes, and my life will be ever thine own. The flowers have been woven, and the garland is ready for the bride's room. After the bedding, the bride shall leave her home and meet her Lord alone in the solitude of night. It is a very important and beautiful stanza where that has become a kind of pride. Poet Tagore wants to meet death because he knows very well. He is waiting for death because he knows very well that it is only death that can take him, that can take him for God to the God and then the meeting that he is waiting for can happen, can take place. He further says, I boasted among men that I had known you. They see your pictures in all works of mine. They come and ask me, who is he? I know not how to answer them. I say, indeed I cannot tell. They blame me and they go away in scorn and you sit there smiling. 
I put my tales of you into lasting songs. The secret gushes out from my heart. They come and ask me, tell me all your meanings. I know not how to answer them, I say. Ah, who knows what they mean? They smile and go away in utter scorn. And you sit there smiling. Then God says, I do not know you. And you have never told me who you are. But as a matter of fact, I have explained everything related to you in my songs, in my poems. When people come to me, they ask me who he is. But I am unable to answer their questions. Then they go away. Then they go away in utter confusion. This is the beauty, my dear friends, of some selected stanzas of Gitanjali. But I do not mean that only these stanzas are the most important or the most striking, but all the stanzas, all the songs of Gitanjali are equally important and beautiful. Now we would like to have a look at Tagore's mysticism because this is the important uh, element of Gitanjali that is usually discussed and debated among scholars because uh, Tagore is considered as a mystic. Ravindranath Tagore was a mystic. A mystic looks inwards. Tagore believed in the immortality of the soul. He was of the opinion that all the objects of nature derive their existence from God. His concept of mysticism was different from the concepts of traditionalists. Tagore's mysticism is firmly rooted to the ground, never losing the base of terra firma. He is not air airy. His mysticism is a part of our world. For Tagore, mysticism is not at all an intellectual theory, but it is fundamentally an active, formative, creating, elevating, and ennobling principle of life. Mysticism means a spiritual grasp of the aims and problems of life in a much more real and ultimate manner than is possible to mere reason. So, as has been discussed, the mysticism of Tagore was different from traditionalists. Like Kabir, Tagore ponders over the problems of life and surrenders himself to God. He asks his readers to have unshaken faith in divine wisdom, love and charity. He says, O fool, to try to carry thyself upon thy own shoulders. So, some traditional conditions he condemns also. Leave all the burdens on his hands who can bear all and never look behind in regret. This is what he says actually. So we can very easily understand the mysticism of Tagore is a bit different from traditionalists. Another important point that is usually found, in fact, uh, uh, in Vishwabharati, even now, the song written by Tagore, particularly the song of Gitanjali, are sung even these days. So this is what is called lyricism of Tagore. Tagore is considered to be one of the greatest lyricists of the world. As a lyric poet, he is in the company of Surdas, Vidyapati, Meera, and Shelley. His genius was primarily lyrical, and all his poems have the tinge of a lyric. Like Shelley, he exhales a lyric as a flower, exhales fragrance. Tagore's reputation as a mystic and philosopher has overshadowed his greatness as a lyric poet. But taking into consideration, the large number of lyrics he has written and his confidence over their universality, one is tempted to say that he is primarily a lyricist and his philosophy and mysticism come afterwards. So, lyric or lyrical quality was also an important feature in the poetry of Tagore. Before commenting upon the quality of Tagore's lyrics, it will be worthwhile to know about lyric as a form of poetry. A lyric is a brief subjective poem marked by emotions and melody. It comes from within. It comes from, from the inward uh, heart of the poet, actually. It is spontaneous in expression. The language of a lyric should be simple. When we analyze Tagore's lyrics, we find his language to be extremely simple. His expression is natural, with lyrics having a musical touch to them, as they can be sung by the ordinary people. Shakespeare. Wordsworth, Shelley, Keats, Tennyson, and Swinburne are the leading lyricists of English literature. Vidyapati, Surdas, 
Tulsi Das, Meera Bai Kabir and Mahadevi are the leading lyric poets of Hindi literature. Rabindranath Tagore, as a matter of fact, is a doyen of modern lyricists in India and arguably the greatest lyric poet of Bengali literature. Tagore's Gitanjali is a collection of devotional songs. He was a devotee but with difference. He never ignored the world. He mingled his personality with him, had a communion with the Supreme. His poetry is nothing but prayer, pleading and exaltation. A devotee prays, pleads and sublimates himself, loses his identity by merging it with God. The lines below are the testament to fact that Tagore did it brilliantly. The given stanza expresses what we have discussed so far. So, this was the lyricism of Tagore actually uh, and for his lyricism he was very famous. Uh, now the other important point that we are going to discuss is Tagore's patriotism. Tagore was a politically conscious writer. He has written a number of patriotic songs. Our national anthem is also written by him. As regards the patriotic songs of Gitanjali, the 35th song holds a great significance. This political lyric is said to be included in the Gitanjali from one of his Bengali works written much earlier. This lyric is perhaps the most famous one of Tagore's illustrious book. No school curriculum is complete without this song and very often it is entitled as Motherland. When Tagore wrote it somewhere in between 1903 uh, and 10, Iqbal was also chanting Sare Jahan Se Achha. These two poems were very popular during the pre-independence era, of course, Iqbal's Kwami Tarana national song was published in 1904 in an Urdu magazine called Jamana in Kanpur and it got tremendous popularity, leaving all songs far behind. But Tagore's patriotic songs forced the people so much in same manner out of their narrow cell and made them think of broader issues affecting humanity. His patriotism is not confined to a particular country, it is widespread. It transcends the territorial boundaries and aims at the introduction of sublime values of fearlessness, truthfulness, and unity. He prays that what we have already discussed in the song actually, where the mind is without fear, where the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls. The above lyric sums up Tagore's philosophy. If the avid Gitanjali lo lovers were asked to name the only one lyric which represents him in totality, then they will name the 35th song of the Gitanjali. In this short lyric, the poet prays to God for the true freedom of his country, as we have already discussed. He wants spiritual emancipation for India. He asks for heaven, free from the bondage of caste, greed, selfishness, and violence. This is the vision he has for India and for the entire world. This is completely in consonance with the Indian culture. The language of Tagore is very simple. Whatever he wrote in English was not at all difficult. It seems he was a follower and practitioner of biblical English. The English of Tagore and Gandhi was simple, while the English used by Arvindo and Radhakrishnan was very difficult. The language we see in the Gitanjali touches our heart. Tagore believed in simplicity, which is evident by the usage of simple words. As a matter of fact, he used a very simple language in Gitanjali, and uh, uh, the language that is uh, uh, almost in a kind of prayer. So it is usually very easy to understand by all of us. It doesn't create any difficulty for our students. Now. Uh, Gitanjali, as you know, is a very fine collection of lyrics and it has a uh, amalgamation of lyricism, mysticism and devotion and because of Gitanjali, Tagore was able to get Nobel Prize for literature and it was such a wonderful book that it was translated in so many languages, people liked it everywhere, people were ap uh, appreciating this book. And in fact, it has become a part of different syllabi also in India and abroad. So hopefully you must have enjoyed the session. I thank you all of you. Thank you very much.